in a world of podcasts. One rises in the night to destroy them all. The Elder God in an ocean of noise. The Cthulhu of the airwaves. This is Spoiler Country. Alright guys, welcome back to Make My Marvel TV, presented by Spoiler Country, obviously. Today, season finale of The Loki Show, as we like to call it. Because <laughs> Loki just isn't enough. You know, it's The Loki Show, especially when you have a million Lokis being on the show. <laughs> it kind of makes sense. So, first impressions... For me, I, I did really enjoy this episode. I actually, I thought they wrapped up the season pretty nicely. Um, but I know that there's been a lot of back and forth with people on this. So, Casey, let's start with you, man. What'd you think? What? Okay, so so we we never really got to talk about episode five. First, I want to go like I, episode I five. We did episode five, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Episode five was a fucking banger. I really enjoyed episode five. We, um, John talked about episode five. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah, we have a whole episode on it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, really? Did, was it just two assholes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I enjoyed it. What, what I was getting at, I enjoyed it. And old Loki stole the show. Yeah. As much as, as, you know, alligator Loki was fun and, you know, cute and whatever, old Loki on top of his game. And it made me w- want to watch with Nail and I. I'm sure it had nothing to do with, with Loki, but that actor w- did a great job. But, but yeah. With Nail and I is always worth watching. Have you seen it, Casey? I, I have not. I have oh, not. God, it's, mate, it's a masterpiece. It's an unbelievable film. It's brilliant. I've heard so many good things about it. It's just one of those things that I haven't had the opportunity to check out. But which, yeah, so. What movie? Which movie? With, with Nail and Dolly. It's called Neil with Neil and I. It's a it's a it's a kind of that essentially is. an extended talking head piece about two out of work actors at the end of the swinging sixties, just as it's becoming the seventies, and it's about a weekend in their lives. And um, and with Nail is the is the Richard E. Grant character, who's like basically a sort of demonic alcoholic thespian. Yeah. And then there's his best mate, also an actor who is played by the guy who plays the eighth Doctor Who. Um, Paul oh. McGann and, and that character's name although he's never ever named in the film that character's name is Marwood and in the cast they have them lift, uh, listed as with now and I and basically it's essentially or, although it's it's not a first person type movie it's essentially mainly Marwood's point of view that you're seeing about yeah. what happens to them but it's extremely funny it's brilliant uh, I have to check it out I've never Just seen it either very very British film but it's very very funny yeah, is it like the comedy. the British version of My Dinner with Andre or something uh, uh, it, it makes me think thing. of I, I mean funny. it's not a, no, it's not necessarily a million miles away from from that but it, it it's it's uh, it's just this great sort of uh, profanity laced <laughs> troll through these guys <laughs> dissolute habits you know, at a turning point in their lives where ultimately you can see that one of them is going to go one way and one of them is going to go the other way. And it's about the nature of their relationship. They've been codependent for a long time. It's it's very funny. It's I, I mean, Rich Lee Grant's spectacular in it. Yeah, really good. Yeah. So it's the first thing that brought him to public attention, really. But it, it's absolutely worth watching. It's incredible. No, I wanted to hunt it down and watch it. Yeah, R- Richard E. Grant just like killed, and I would love to see him back in the costume again. I don't know if that's a possibility, but that total God dang, style he, he he pulled it off, and the the pathos that he brought to that character, and like the the I, just like bitter assholeness, and then I, he comes in and redeems himself. Yeah, at the end it was fantastic. So John and I talked about the costume on our episode five review out now and check it out everybody check it out <laughs> spoiler <laughs> spoil country make my marvel tv episode it's there Loki, Loki show episode five you go to youtube right now and look that up it was just funny because i was thinking i think it looked great you know i could not handle a full movie with that costume like if they made the loki show in the 80s that's the costume i feel oh, like oh yeah yeah for sure <laughs> or if roger corman had made the Loki show, that's the costume he would have went with. And I was like, 
I couldn't watch a full season or a full movie with some guy being Laufusen in that costume. But yeah. the snippets that we got Richard Grant in, it looked it was awesome. That whole scene where he he creates the city and brings it down, you know what I mean? It yeah, awesome, awesome. But it's- Don made a good point. He says he can make a construct so realistic that he can fool himself. And so is it him that actually dies? Oh. You know? Yeah. That was a cool little thing, because if they want to bring Richard E. Grant back, we can do it. And it's, in in regards to that costume, it's one of those things where it's like, those costumes don't work until they work. Right. Like, like well, it, you needed 15 years of seeing Marvel <laughs> costumes to be able to. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you, you get the context in which is presented, and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that actually rocks. That is and also, actually badass. It's not what it isn't. It's not a really carefully designed, faithful iteration of that costume. Right. It is a faithful iteration of that costume that's designed to look ill fitting and stupid. Like, yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. That's the whole so point. Is that, is that it's a figure hugging, but he's got an old man's out shape body. It's all on, all done on purpose. It's supposed to look really naff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. I love it. I love it. You know, the thing I missed in that episode, and we had pulled up screenshots during our episode five review out now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> we brought up screenshots because I had missed uh, Throg. And the Thanos copter, I totally did too. Yeah, and they're 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 on there. They actually go by the Throg is in a uh, test bottle, right? He's in a bottle and he's sealed up. And then the helicopter crash is there, and it's yellow, and it says Thanos right on the side of the helicopter. We're like, oh, I was like, oh my god, how did I miss this? And, yeah, <laughs> it was pretty good. So uh, going back to episode six though getting on with episode six you mean get, yeah getting on with yeah yeah kind of veering back into our, the original our mini question. episode five review oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> episode which six te- which is a teaser for kenrick and johnny's whole exactly. episode about episode five which you should stop watching this <laughs> and go and watch on youtube oh, on now. spoiler country and come back and then watch this <laughs> so, listen to this episode six they landed the plane yeah. I, I was worried that they wouldn't be able to even in the opening, I was worried they wouldn't be able to because the God, my, I'm blanking right now. The guy who played Tig on Lovecraft Country, mm-hmm. Jonathan Majors. Yeah, yeah Jonathan think, Majors. Yeah. He he played his role almost like a Bugs Bunny type. Hang, guy. I've never yeah, he played Hang portray- portrayed this way, and I loved it. I really did. Because it clearly, it's a teaser too. He he's but the, the next version of Kang we're going to see is not going to be like this guy. You know, exactly. It's going to be completely different. And he warned him. He he warned both of them. He was like, you know, you can get rid of me, but I can't vouch for the other guys. I don't know how they're going to be. Yeah. So, and it's... I, well, he was like essentially saying they're going to be far fucking worse than this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's either the devil you know or the time. devil yeah. you don't. I mean, he did say, doesn't he say, if you kill me, I'm just going to end up right back here again. Yeah, right on. Yeah, but this time it'll be worse. Yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah, one hundred percent. And yeah, they they freaking nailed it. What did they get wrong, was, Casey? What did they get wrong? Yeah. <sighs> you, or what did you not like? I should say because wrong or right. They, you. There was a whole lot that I didn't like. I I was still kind of the. The motivation behind the and I, I'm blanking on her name. The the, the head of uh, the TBA. Oh, yeah. Still not completely sure about what that is. However, I did watch the show while walking my dog through the woods. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you were as watch, I'm watching it in optimum conditions. Shall exactly, say. exactly. I had my phone right here, and I'm being pulled through the woods by my dog, and I'm making sure that he occasionally doesn't like you know choke on a deer skull or something because he's freaking lunatic. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that's that's how I roll. Yeah. So Sumner, give us the actually Sumner. I want to ask you a question. Yeah, of course, mate. Before we go into your 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 thoughts of the season six finale or season episode six season finale, <laughs> um, which that, that's that was a spoiler in and of itself. 
Yeah, when, yeah. I when they said the fin- what I just said there and kind of get what the end scene, end scene was, yeah. And they uh, said season finale in all the, the write-ups. I was like, wait, wait. They don't say season finale unless it's yeah. coming back. I want to ask you, yeah. Kenrick. We can, what we did can you think that. of episode six? I liked it, man. I had a lot of fun. And, and to give out the spoiler, the, the, the extra scene announcing season two, I legitimately... <gasps> <laughs> like worst spoiler ever, by the way. I mean, that, as, as, as twists at the end going, there'll be another series. That, yeah. that I, I found that supremely underwhelming. That's it. That's the twist. I, I, this I, is going to be a second series. I can tell you that at the beginning. Yeah, I went <gasps> because none of the other, none of the other things are. I don't think any of them are coming back. So I just assumed this isn't. And I haven't been reading things online because I'm getting really sick of the leaks. Yeah, cool. I'm yeah, getting yeah. really yeah. sick of people giving out spoilers before, you know what I mean? Like, we're giving out spoilers, but we're called... We're, we're spoiler country, dude. After <laughs> been out. I mean, the show's already... No, what, what Kenry means is we do the spoiling. Yeah. We're, we're spoiler country. We'll yeah. spoil it for you. Yeah, as we say, much. not as we do. <laughs> but I'm talking about people that, like, like somebody before the episode even comes out, you know, and they're saying, yeah, this is all the stuff that's going to happen. It's like, why, okay, why would you want to do that to somebody? You know, I don't want to know what... I mean, some people want to know that stuff because they're impatient and they don't like surprises, I guess. But to me, it's like, I want to, I, I, I don't want that. So I haven't been reading it. So, and I didn't notice it that they called it the season finale when like, like Casey did. I'm pointing to Casey. <laughs> <laughs> like Casey did. So it, so when it legitimately came up, you know, it will appear in season two. I literally went, <gasps> No way. <laughs> that season two? That's freaking awesome. <laughs> Even though, because at the beginning of us reviewing the Loki show, the first thing I said, if anybody goes back and we did episode one and two together, you'll notice the first thing I said was I was falling asleep. Yeah. And, but I did say once that when I went to go watch four, I watched one, two, and three again. And I was, and I watched them straight through and I, and I really enjoyed it the second time around. I think, I think there's something about this show that you watch the second time. It seems a lot better to me. And I really, you know, the only thing I can say is this. I didn't like Sylvie's and Loki's relationship with Kang. It's like they went through all this stuff. And because Kang says, well, do you, can you ever trust anybody, Sylvie? You know what I mean? And she's like, all of a sudden, her whole attitude towards Loki changed. There was no buildup. for They had all this buildup for their trust to be there and to see Loki make these steps to be not the Loki of Thor 2 and Thor and, and Avengers, but the new Loki that has started to build personal relationships. And then within two seconds, all of a sudden, Sylvie just changes completely. And her attitude towards him is different. And every, you know what I mean? And they start getting this weird argument about killing him or not killing him and not wanting to listen to him. And I just, it didn't make sense to me. I was like, this is, it felt like you you spent all this time building these characters in this relationship. And then you just tore it apart in two seconds as opposed to giving us an, a, a real good reason why. There was no underlying theme that was explained uh, during the first five episodes they give you, because there should be some kind of hint that her attitude would change that way. You know what I mean? And there wasn't. They only built blocks of, tr- they only built blocks of trust. And I, th- and I thought that was weird to all of a sudden end the show that way. You know? Uh, that's the only thing I didn't like. I was like, she could have killed him. Like, she could have been, like, very forceful. No, no, this is, I, I have work my ass off to get to this point, da 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 and then still been about killing Kang because she sees him as the big bad, which he is, but at the same time, he isn't because it's kind of weird. But at the, but have her be like, do it, then push Loki out, or push Loki, I don't know, the, the argument of trust and the argument of all of a sudden not trusting Loki at all was very weird to me. I, it didn't make sense. But other like, than that, I like the rest. With Sylvia, I think one of her main objectives is survival. Like, that is who she is in a nutshell, is someone who, who is, who's striving for survival. Yeah. And with with her at the end of it, is she's, like, surviving without purpose now. Because the 
you know, she figured out what the TVA is and who it is. So what was she fighting for now at the at the very end? After she kills Kang, there's still more Kang. Well, she doesn't believe that. What what did you think about their kiss? What was it narcissistic in that like Loki can only like love himself in the end. I I actually thought about that. I was like, I asked John, I'm like, so is that just masturbation? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, honestly, I, it's a, it's a real question. Is that just a weird kind of weird masturbatory fantasy well, that you're I, doing yourself that way? I, I think that kind of that trope. It's a big part of time travel fiction. Yeah, and I think something yeah. I touched oh, upon yeah. previously is that there's quite a well-known time travel novel. It's by David Gerald. David Gerald wrote the Trouble with Troubles episode of Star Trek. A classic. And, uh, which is a classic. And this book is called The Man Who Folded Himself, which is well worth reading. And, uh, and that's about a guy who, multiple, who, who multiple, can travel time travel with his own timeline. And essentially, he starts meeting version after version of himself. That's what it's about. And ultimately, he meets and has a relationship with a, a female version of himself and they have a child. You know, it's all this kind of stuff. So that, they're just touching upon a major kind of masturbatory trope of time travel yeah. i think and then you can look at some of the more creepy time travel kind of books we mentioned a couple of weeks ago robert heinlein whose stuff has got this very 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 unsettling uh, almost incestual kind of edge to it <laughs> and there's a famous kind of time travel the time travel adjacent book by him called the door into summer which features all kinds of weird shit so it's definitely in that vein so that's how i took it when i saw that scene i yeah. think they're aware of all those cultural antecedents and the kind of winking at the audience going yeah you know and it's quite a lovely idea that the only person loki can truly love is himself and his get out of jail card is lo and behold he finds a fi finds a female version of himself so or, i mean it could be another male version of himself because yeah. loki's bi you know it could be fucking crocodile um loki who knows? Do you know what I mean? He's getting, his, getting his, getting his, you know, kind of Asgardian or or frost giant dick like snapped off or whatever. You know what I mean? So, There's all manner of things that could be going on, but I think the idea that he can become sexually attracted to a version of himself is quite lovely. Actually, I, yeah. I really like that. Yeah. At the end of the, a good summation of episode six, is Loki goes, "You know what? Maybe I will go fuck myself." Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> people fun. keep people keep on telling me to do this. I may as well. <laughs> And also, like you, you brought up, people keep telling me. What do people keep telling Loki throughout the entire show? He's going to be alone. He will always be alone. Yeah. That is something that he is always battling with, I, I guess, internally. And at the end of the series, like he kind of is alone, but he knows it's not the final option. Yeah, like he's he's had a taste of having somebody. I want to know. Which made the ending even even worse because you know nobody remembers him. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah that yeah that was that's interesting. I it hits hard. Yeah, that does hit hard. I want to know if they're ever going to explore his need to rule, his need oh, to want sure. to be the king of Asgard and the king of the. I mean, like it, that's a very odd. I mean, I think I think there's people that are really like that that have this need in their head that they have to be the ruler of, you know what I mean? And, and it's kind of a trope in comics, you know, that's somebody who's always just trying to take over, but I, I kind of want to know what his, because his background, he comes from a very loving family, you know, yeah. now, obviously not when, you know, when he's taken, when he's a baby, you know what I mean? But the, the environment in which he's raised is very loving. So it's it's a weird it's a weird dichotomy that he's like, I have to take over Asgard, and then I want to take over the galaxy and then the universe, you know, and, and Mobius kind of lays the steps out of what he wants to do. But why does he want to do this? And he they well, never I, really get into it. I, I think I think there are I think there are sort of two interesting things about that. Yeah. Is that number one, to answer your question, I think some people are just born with it. I don't really think it's a it's a nurture thing. Yeah. I think it's mainly a nature thing. You know, you you you, you know you don't. The, the, uh, and sometimes you've got it within your nature and then nurture is an accelerant. And I think the accelerant for him within this mythology is him becoming aware of his otherness, even when he didn't actually know 
he always felt it within inside him the otherness he never quite knew what what it actually was yeah right right but but also the way i would look at it is personally i took it that that whole episode where he sits there and he looks at all the, all the multiple variants of his life and the way that it goes and he spends what's a much longer period of time than we see on screen analyzing the different outcomes of his life at the end of that he's kind of done with the world domination thing i think that's very much part of that episode he's like all oh, right okay it's actually so it doesn't matter it doesn't matter because every time any way i do this I, it never actually works out because number one the thing about loki is yeah he wants to rule but two he's actually really bad at it because he's not a natural people leader. That's not what he is. He's a, he's a god of mischief, right? It, 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 what he's drawn to do is fuck shit up. Right. That's why when he does when he does for that period of time take over Asgard and, and you know he's there in the role of Ge of um, not Zeus fucking hell, Odin. He's there in the role <laughs> of Odin. Get my like get my gods mixed up. When he's there in the role of Odin, the reason he doesn't last is the minute Thor turns up, it's like hang on, something dreadfully wrong with all of this. It's, it's not right because <laughs> he's doing such a bad job of it. And I don't think he's the kind of guy. Yeah, he might get power but he can't keep it because he can't run shit properly right because right, right. he, he's addicted to chaos and if you want to run stuff you have to make it work okay so so i think i think i think those two things are so i i very much looked at this narrative in terms of once you got through that episode it, it's like again okay well i don't actually want to fucking rule anymore and he hasn't said anything more about ruling he, even when people ask him about it he's like no i don't want to do that he's yeah. trying to figure out what the fuck he should be doing with his with his hugely long life and that's kind of what this show is about i um what'd you think of the episode summer i mean you haven't really got yeah, to it yet yeah no so so i th what i thought about the episode uh, is what i generally thought about the series which is I absolutely loved the casting, like I always do with Marvel, and I loved the performances. Yeah. And for me, the show was about the power of the performances, all of which I enjoyed. And even though I didn't particularly enjoy this Jonathan Majors iteration of Kang, I know that his fucking bastard version of, of Kang will be very compelling because that guy's an amazing actor. He is a yeah. fantastic actor. Yeah, oh, he's, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. So His Bugs so, Bunny Kang was off-putting at first. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, I, they, that, I know where he'll come back and he'll be, he'll, he'll be absolutely balls deep into it, right? Tearing the arsehole out of that part. It'll be, it'll be great. Right? <laughs> but, 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 but <laughs> uh, so to speak, so to speak. But I would say that so what I liked about the show is the casting and the production values. What I didn't like about the show was everything else. I was like absolutely bored to death by this in a way that I haven't been bored to death by anything that the, that, that the Fagy Alonzo kind of iteration of Marvel have put together, right? Yeah. I'm missing one of those three big, big producers out. I remember his name in a second. And I, I, found, I found it spectacularly not gripping, yeah? Now, I could say that's because <clears throat> Thor and the whole mythology of Thor is one of my least favourite comic books, and that is true. However, much to my surprise, most of the Thor movies, this Dark World's not is probably the worst Marvel movie, isn't, isn't that good? We've still got good bits in it. But Thor and, and uh, Ragnarok are no doubt... Uh, you know, Love and War or whatever. I mean, Ragnarok's amazing. It's one of the best Marvel films. So what, the way they've dealt with with Thor with and Loki within the Marvel Universe, I've loved every time. Right. But this, for me, I think maybe one of the issues, maybe, is that it's like back in the 70s when they did the Joker comic book. Yeah, it always had great covers, but if you read it, it's kind of underwhelming because you can't make the Joker the hero of a book. It's right. complete antithetical to what he's designed to do. And the problem with having Loki going on a journey to like search for himself and all that kind of stuff is Loki is basically there to fuck shit up and upstage the leads of within the Marvel Universe, give a better performance to, than them and be very compelling in the moments that he's on screen, which he has always been. I think Tom Hiddleston is an amazing actor. The concept works less well for me if you're just following him around and you make him the sympathetic character and then you weave everything around him. And while that led to these great kind of moments, I loved all of his interaction with, with Wilson, with Mobius. And I quite liked his interaction with Sylvie, right? Yeah. And I quite liked his interaction with the other versions of himself. 
And Richard E. Grant's good in everything he does. Richard E. Grant is essentially what Tom Hiddleston is going to be in 20 years' time because they're very similar. They've got a very similar energy as actors, I think. Yeah. But uh, I had to make myself watch it. Whoa. The case yeah. just disappeared just like that. Disappeared. His, his probably his alarm is telling him to go and call somebody in the middle of the night halfway around the world. Well, you know, yeah. that's. He, maybe he's yeah. walking his dog and <laughs> yeah who knows who knows wow that was spectacular so so, so i i think i, I you know i think it, it just this series i i thought I, with issue three with episode three i thought oh man yeah okay there's been a step change here yeah, I, yeah. and they made all the silver reveals but since then i have actually been spectacularly bored by it in a way that in a way that I, not ev not everyone loved Falcon and Winter Soldier, but for me that was the high watermark for these shows. I fucking love that because yeah. it doubled down on everything I love, yep. the, the Captain Captain America universe. But it did it so well, and it dealt with Winter Soldier and with Falcon so well. I fucking love that show, and I also really love One Division, which I thought was genuinely full of reveals and surprises. Right, and I was constantly wondering yeah, what's going to so happen. Different. What's going to happen? Yeah, yeah. But with this, it was just a really ho hum experience, mm -hmm. and. This is yeah. about the only thing. This is about the only thing they've done at Marvel where I've thought, well, actually, some of the the non faggy Netflix shows are better than this show. So I, for example, I think both the both Daredevil and the Punisher are much better viewing experiences than the Loki show is. I would agree yeah. with that. It's it's not better than Jessica Jones and Luke Cage, and it's certainly not. But it's uh, it's better than those, and it's certainly better than Iron Fist, which is a piece of shit, right? But but you like Iron I Fist? would say that I don't. I I thought I, thought, I wanted to like Iron Fist because Iron Fist is one of my favorite characters. Yeah. But I think the big problem with Iron Fist is they cast the part wrong, and that wasn't Feige. That was that was the other the other cats who yeah. were running Marvel TV at the time. We'll have to come back to that in a different episode. Yeah. There's a whole there's a whole thing to be talked right. about how they managed to fuck that up. Yeah. Which was very sad for me to see because I really love the Iron Fist mythology. But back to Loki, I just didn't find it gripping or arresting at all. Like at all. And for me the whole thing was okay, so so basically this whole six part series has essentially been an introduction to Kang and an introduction to the timeline of the Marvel Universe getting totally fucked up and splintered. Right, right. right. And that's what this has achieved. This is the roadmap. That's the road six map. fucking episodes, right? Six hours of television to get to this point, which is basically something in one of the movies you could do in 10 minutes. In one of the movies, you could do everything this has achieved in a post credit sequence that lasts two minutes. Yeah. You could. The timeline is fractured, and here's Kang. That, that's all it did. All right, that, guys. Uh, I think we've come to an end. I want to appreciate you guys taking your time today. Talk about Loki 6 and a plethora of other things. I hope everybody enjoyed that. Because Voodoo Child Issue 2. Voodoo Child Issue 2 coming soon to a Kickstarter near you. Actually, it's already started. Go there. And uh, if you can't donate, share it out because that'll – this this guy or this – wherever he's at, Casey, Wu-Tang, will really much appreciate it. Uh, I just want to appreciate everybody coming on. If you liked what you heard here, go check out Episodes 1 through 6 of Make My Marvel TV, The Loki Show. Also, if you're enjoying the other Marvel shows, check out all the other ones that we have because we got we're covering all of it, baby. We're coloring covering all of it, and we just really appreciate everybody coming on and, and checking it out. Andrew, any final thoughts before we go? No, I'm just looking forward to seeing what they do next. What they do next, I can't even remember what their next show is that's queued up. I know it's not for like a while, yeah. So I'll Hawkeye? be interested to see where that goes. I hope it's what, what, what if comes out now. Oh, what, now, what if I am looking forward to? I'm looking yeah. forward to that. I'm also looking forward to Hawkeye. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to both of those. What if's pretty soon. So yeah, we'll be back for what if. There you go. Casey, any final thoughts? You guys, it's, it's great finally getting to talk to you guys. I always it always makes my weekend good when I get to see your smiling faces. Thank y'all for for having me on again. And go go to Voodoo Child issue two. All right. Peace, is this so peace? Please support it. Sumner. Is yeah, it, so this off? is this is yeah, peace. Yeah. This is fuck you. There you go. Peace. <laughs> fuck you. It's that easy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah, I should say as well, come and check me out at Hard Degree. Yeah. Hard Degree, which you can find on all good podcasts. Where oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it, mate. Uh we've got a good one that's going up. Well, as we're recording this, the next episode should be going up real soon, which is Matt Wagner, who's uh who was, oh, wow. was very interesting. That was great. That was and that 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 episode was booked by Jeff Hart. Yeah, yeah, that was that was gonna be my interview, and I had yeah. uh, uh work fall apart, so I had to go and I called Sumner and I'm like, Do you want to talk with Matt Wagner? He's like, Hey, you're right, I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I mean, as, you as you will see, I, I'm a I'm a huge. I, even though I had like ten minutes to get ready for that, yeah. I, as it happens, given that I've read virtually everything the guy's ever done, it was a pretty easy one to do. And he he talks for a good solid. I think where it's about a ninety minute conversation about his entire career. And it's if you're if you're a fan of his work, it's well it's well worth listening to. His Sandman and, series was fantastic. Oh fuck, Sandman, mate, we're talking the same. We're talking the same language. Yes. Sandman Mystery Theater is one of my yes. all-time favorite top two or three books ever. Oh, it's amazing. Was really good. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it, it's good. And the other thing is also another guest that I've got coming up a week or two after that is John K. Snyder the Third, who he who uh, Wagner created uh, Doctor Midnight with. John K. Snyder III used to be the artist on Suicide Squad, and he did a, an amazing graphic novel uh, last year, Eight Million Ways to Die, of the famous Lawrence Block, Matt Scudder novel, Private Eye novel. And uh, it's it's fantastic. He's just a, an amazing artist, very close uh, collaborator of Matt Wagner's. So it's kind of a sequel to that almost. It's, it's almost like a two piece. You guys go. A lot nice. of cool, fun surprises coming on Hard Degree later this year. Keep it on out. And yeah. have a wonderful day, guys. We'll see y'all yeah. later. Love to have a good weekend. Care. Be safe, guys. Ciao. Cheers, guys. Take care. Spark a dream. And we're back. That's right. We are back. Back in the saddle again. Well, <laughs> I hope you guys really, really enjoyed that as much as we did making it for you. And if you like what you heard and you want to hear more, you got to go check out spoilerverse.com because at spoilerverse.com we have a plethora amazing directors and artists of all walks of life and editors and writers and oh my god are you a lover of comic books like we are then so there's many. so many amazing people from the comic book world over at spoilerverse.com and i highly implore you to go there and check it out yeah, and while you're there, you can check out all the other podcasts on our network, like Bridges and the Geekdoms and Funny Book Forensics and Haphazard Adventures and Nerds from the Crypt and so many more. Misery Point Radio. Episodes all the time. Go check all of them out. And check out all of the reviews and previews and articles we have going up every single day for you, every day on Spoilerverse.com for you to check out, to read, and to love, and to like, and to comment. We have a store link. If you want to help support the site, you can do it two ways. One, go to our Patreon, which is at patreon.com slash spoiler country. We'll go to our store link in the middle of the site there and get a t-shirt, a face mask, a hoodie, something. Look fly as hell and help support the site when you do that because we get a dollar or two. And, you know, maybe you want to talk to us. If you do, you can do it you know, obviously on all the socials. But if you go to scpod.us slash discord, you can join our public discord server and come chat with us all day long. I couldn't say it better myself, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You just mouthed out a ton of information at once. And really... <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy what you're hearing because we're, we're working our butts off to bring it to you. We are. We are. I guess there's only one left thing. One left thing? Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to go with it. There's only one left thing left to do. What's that? In an oceans of podcasts, we are Cthulhu. As Cthulhu compels you to th- open the mind and read more. Spaghetti. Do you listen to podcasts that sound like this? Hey, welcome back to the Super OK Podcast, where our audio sounds mediocre. Or do you prefer podcasts that sound more like this? Crisp, clear, fun, easy to listen to, and full of awesomeness. Well, then you should check out Spoiler Country, hosted exclusively over at spoilerverse.com.